Well, let everybody know uh, to start with, we're going to have a, a testimony service tonight. If you didn't, if you weren't aware of that, and you'd like to testify. What we're going to do is just sit this microphone right here on that stand right there, and ask everybody who wants to testify to come up here and uh, use the microphone so people online can see you and hear you. All right. So, we're looking forward to hearing you testify and glorify the Lord tonight and what He's done in your life. Could we all stand? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask His blessing. Father God, tonight we thank you. It's a do, uh, truly a blessing tonight to be gathered here to worship you in spirit and truth. We pray once again for the outpouring, the manifestation of your spirit and power. It's not by might nor by power, it's by your spirit, and we just thank you that your presence, your living spirit manifests here in our midst. We ask you to minister to each and every need. Blessed throughout this entire service, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that say a rich life. Shout a praise. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. And I exalt. praise tonight for our ushers to come this evening we'll receive an offering
Could we all pray? Our Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this offering tonight, oh God. May it be used for your glory, to glorify your name and further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship. Praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship. Praise your holy name because you are great. You do miracles so great, there's no one else like you. There is no one else like you when you are great. You do miracles so great, there's no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands and worship. To praise your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands and worship. To praise your holy name, because you are great. You do miracles so great, there's no one else like you. There is no one else like you, and you are great. You do miracles so great, there's no one else like you. There is no one else like you. some prayer requests tonight uh, just found out sister Betty Tucker's granddaughter Emily she's real serious in the hospital and, and is being air vac to another facility uh, where I, I don't know at this time but uh, uh, where she was the hospital she was in couldn't couldn't handle the situation so she's being air vac so very serious also uh, Sister Beverly Pilcher, she's facing some tests coming up pretty soon. Let's pray for her. And Sister Shelley is in a lot of pain tonight and couldn't be here. Amen. I'm sure there are many needs represented. Yes. Yes. All right. Amen. Yes, Dia and Jake are in Little Rock right now. Jake going through these treatments. Linda Rao, okay, yes, let's remember her, okay. Sister Sandy, yes, let's remember her, yes, okay, remember Mac tonight, yes. All right, let's remember her. Remember my mom. Okay, yes, Sister Marilyn, remember her. Anyone else? Casey Hayden. Casey Hayden. Let's pray for Casey Hayden, Ronnie's close friend. Pastor, my wife. Okay, Sister Carolyn, let's remember her. Yes. Okay, all right, let's remember this need. Someone else. All right, amen. Could we stand? Let's all lift up these knees to the Lord tonight and ask God to move by his mighty power. Father, we just thank you, Lord, tonight. Lord, we know there's nothing too hard for you to do. We know that nothing ever takes you by surprise, oh God, that you're well prepared long in advance, oh God, and you have... Uh, the ability to meet all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we ask you to move mightily, Father, upon each of these needs. Oh God, all the sickness, all the difficulty, situations that people are facing. Oh God, you're aware of each and every one tonight. And we just lift them up to you. 
casting all our care on you because we know you care for us. To show forth your mercy, your great grace and strength, O oh God. Hallelujah. Manifest your power and glory. And to God be all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we do that chorus another time or two there? Can't have it. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands and worship to praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands and worship to praise your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory. And the honor as we lift our hands in worship to praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor as we lift our hands in worship to praise your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Could you give the Lord another hand clap tonight? Praise the Lord. Thank you all tonight. Sister Rosie, would you all like to go first? Catch it. You need, need two mics? Okay. We're learning to share. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time. 41 years, we almost got it. <laughs> I told him he remembers things kind of funny, but sometimes I'm glad he doesn't remember everything we've been through, <laughs> if that makes sense or, or not. But um, Ron's first brain tumor come in 2012, and on his third brain tumor, I believe it was 22, when, when that surgery was done, that time the tumor was turning cancerous. So after we got done with the shock of knowing what we were going to battle, then we kind of threw the shoulders back again, and we'd been through battles. <laughs> so we figured we'd fight another one. This one hit us in different ways that I never expected. He went through chemo and radiation, and um, for the first six weeks, he did both of them together. And it knocked the props out from under him, and and some of you witnessed that, and, and he has been so good at faking his way that a lot of you didn't realize how bad it was getting until he couldn't hide it anymore. Uh, there was numerous times that Donnie helped him off the stage, Aaron's helped him off the stage. A lot of times he stayed on the stage. His balance and stuff was just the pits and, and uh, on the 18th when we come to church, when he started getting up, and I'm, I feel like I ride him all the time. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I must explain, my mother was full-blooded Italian and we don't wait for nothing. <laughs> Do we, Aaron? It's hard. <laughs> nobody. For nobody. <laughs> so I feel like most of my life is saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Well, he has never hurried up, and through this, he's went <laughs> backwards. <laughs> But on the 18th, 
of February, I could not get him moving. And then he couldn't walk with his cane, so I drug out the walker, which he hates, despises. And he was falling down with the walker. And I said, honey, maybe we ought to just call and tell him we're not going to be there today. And he said, I'm going to church. <laughs> So I got him to church, and Ronnie had to help get him up on the stage. His greatest fear would be that he'd forget playing how to play the bass. He was so afraid he'd forget how to play the bass, you know, and I was like, God, don't take that away from him until you take him, <laughs> because I don't want him to go through that. He has forgotten so much through this that the memory was slipping and slipping, and, and he was saying things that was just, hard. It just, just, I don't know how to explain it. Um, asking, where, where's the kids? Where are the kids? Well, our kids are 26 years old and older. They all have their own homes. They're all, you know, and it's like, they're all in, they're all at home, hon, you know, but he was waiting for them to run in at all, at any time, and things about his mom. It just, it was just hard, you know, and, and you don't know how to answer without hurting more. So anyway, after the 18th, when this, that was the probably the worst day that we had had, I started calling our doctor here in, in Rogers. We got him in on Tuesday, and we already had an MRI scheduled in Little Rock for um, March, but um, they've not been, see the neurologist had not been seeing him whenever the brain tumor results was good. He didn't need to see him. So they send us back home, and um, this time our doctor here said, I want you to call down there and tell him that your PCP wants him seen by the neurologist. So I don't know if anybody's called a doctor's office, but you go through everything trying to talk to a person. So I started calling Little Rock and calling Little Rock, and I left messages, and nobody called me back. And I, So finally when I did get to speak to his nurse, she said, can you be here tomorrow morning? I said, absolutely. <laughs> So we threw suitcases in the car, called Sheila, said we're not going to make it to church, and we headed to Little Rock. When the doctor, when we seen the doctor, which was another whole mess, because the doctor wasn't there that day, he was in surgeries. And so we waited throughout the day until he got between surgeries and could come and talk to us. And he said, um, I think, he said, I think, feels like maybe his dilantin level's a little bit off. And I said, well, he's been on this same dilantin for years. And he said, well, sometimes it builds up in the system. Let's just get that blood tested. Why they've not been tested, I don't know. But anyway, we went and finally got the blood test, and we're heading back home from Little Rock. And we get a call from the nurse. And she said, Ron's dilantin level is toxic. Said, he's at 35 and they start showing toxicity at 24, it shouldn't be over 15. And I said, I I'm really sorry, but this is the best news we've gotten so far. I feel like now we got something we can fight with. So she took him totally off of it for two days. They dropped his dilantin. You guys have seen him. Within a week, he's walking. Within two weeks, he was smarting off at me. <laughs> Within three weeks, he was out in the yard helping me. And I've seen such a turnaround. And my boys that are here, they help us mow and everything. And they'd been telling me, Mom, you got to do something. You gotta do. I'm thinking, I'm doing all I can. I don't know what to do. And, and, uh, and they knew that. Well, then now... The last time they was there, it's like, <laughs> Mom, how do you remember that? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> but we're seeing part of that coming back, too. And I am just grateful. I've seen God work so many times in our lives that I thought, I believe he does miracles. I know that. I'm, I'm, I've been there. I've done that. But then when this hit, it's like, Sheila asked me to teach a, a Christmas thing. It's like, I can't. I can't, 
I got mad at myself for being mad at him, got mad at God for letting this, you know what I mean? I'm t I, I, that's just honest. That's just honest. And then, and then when this starts happening, it's like, okay, God, you're on. And he ain't done yet. And I'm so grateful. And thank you for standing behind us and bring, being the prayer support that we always knew we had. And I appreciate it. God, you, you can't out, outdo God, you know, in any way. And you see God work miracles and do great things in people's lives. And, and uh, I said, you know, we prayed, God, where's ours? You know, where's our miracle? And, and he showed us, you know, a miracle because, um, you know, it's, it's a wonder I didn't get hurt falling down because... Um, I don't bounce like I used to. <laughs> I found out I don't hit the ground and just bounce right back up. <laughs> and she she couldn't help me much, you know. <laughs> and so it was quite a sight. I'm glad it was just the two of us, I guess, that had to witness that. And uh, one time I fell was in the airport out here at XNA. I just made a turn around like that and I just I just kept a going and I knew there was a pole back there so I said well I, you know I'm see if I can get a hold of something to stop me well I was already on the way down before I got to that and they had these big trash cans and my head hit one of them on the way down and uh, it seemed like my head and face always took the brunt of a lot of the lot of the falls that I took and uh, I just thank the good Lord that didn't bruise any worse than it did you know on some things because I thought I was had an excuse to let them know she got had more than she could take <laughs> but God is it has done done great things and and uh, surprised me sometimes but uh, we shouldn't be surprised at what God does for us let him do it in your life and and uh, he'll he he wants to show us the blessings and the great things that he can do if we'll just let him do it. Amen. That's awesome. Awesome tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Rayetta, you going to testify? God's good, isn't he? All the time. Uh, my story, that's a good testimony, Brother Rob, Sister Rosie. Uh, my story began, I guess, about, oh, about a year or so ago. And uh, they started running some testing on me. And they at first thought it was my lungs, that I had problems with my lungs. And so they run the test on it, and it come back normal. And uh, so they started running different tests on me, and they uh, determined that I, well, they tried to, they did a catheterization, and they couldn't do it because they said the blockages in my heart was so bad, and that I was going to have to have open heart surgery, either a three or four bypass. Uh, I didn't even know until the day of the surgery just how bad it was, but, uh, but uh, I, you just wouldn't believe how God was with me through this from, from my family, my church family, all the support I got, all the prayers I got. Oh, it was wonderful. And my husband, he's the best nurse. I tell all everybody he's the best nurse I ever had. But, uh, but uh, he, uh, I could feel Oh, it was probably, I don't even know, because it was harder on the church family and my, my biological family than it was me because I didn't know what was going on. But uh, there was probably at least 15 to 20 people there praying for me while I was at the hospital. And she and Robert was there and, and just a lot of people. And 
while I'm talking about this, I want to be sure to thank everybody for all their prayers, all their love, all their gift cards, all the food. It just, it's just amazing. But they get me in ICU three days. I was pretty critical for the first three days. Uh, I've still got bruises where I shouldn't have them. But, uh, but uh, and then they put me in step down for three days, and then they let me go home. And after I got home, I remember laying on the couch because Jerry was afraid I'd fall off the bed. So he put me on the couch and, uh, and he'd stay in there with me in a chair at night and everything. And, and I can remember all I could say is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But I could feel him so strong. I could see angels around me. I could see how much peace I had. Even when I had the surgery, I wasn't scared to go into that surgery. I knew, you know, I knew that I was okay with the Lord. I mean, I'm glad he kept me. I'm glad he kept me because I feel like sometimes the Lord gives you, there's certain reasons that he's not ready to take you yet because uh, for one, my, most of my children don't serve the Lord and they need to and they're good kids, but they, it, good's not going to get you to heaven. And so I pray, pray, pray for the kids well, they're grown kids, like Brother Ron talked, but I pray for my kids and my grandkids because they need the Lord so bad. And I'm hoping maybe they can see through me and what I just went through and what I'm still going through that somehow they can see that it has to be God. It can't be anything else. That I made it. I'm 77, almost 77 years old, and I feel so much better than I did a year ago. Now, and I just want to thank everybody. Thank you for your prayers. Keep them up. They're working. Love you all. Wonderful. Hallelujah. God's good. All right. Sister Janice. Hallelujah. We're calling on the ones that told us that they wanted to testify. And so if, if you got a testimony, is there anyone else? Okay. All right. Be thinking about testimony. God is so good. There's nothing nothing better. But um, Sister Rayetta was talking about saying the name of Jesus. I can remember when I was in Bible school. There was a couple of us cars driving back and forth from Houston to Missouri. And one of the boys hit a, the one in front of us hit a slick spot about Tulsa, about crossing the Arkansas River. Hit an icy spot, and his car went up like that and down, almost gone over the, the rim there. And I was in the car behind him, and I hollered, Jesus. Well, that car came back down and went on. It had to be the hand of Jesus that brought that car back up, and nowhere into the right hand. So God is so good. And then, to there's been, God has been with me through a lot of things. But I did want to say there's been a time or two I've come up here for prayer. And uh, one of them was that I found a lump in one of my breasts. And I've had breast cancer before, so I figured that's probably what it was. But I went and they had biopsy done. Nothing showed up. So I praise God for that, that nothing, it wasn't cancer or anything. And then um, I've asked prayer for my daughter. My daughter was having a real hard time. She, is, she was... Um, a manager over a restaurant. It's just a small restaurant, but it serves good food there in Branson. And she was having some difficult times. And so I went up time or two to Brother Robert and Sister Sheila had prayer. God's took care of that. So I just praise God for that. So we serve a great mighty God. We just need to put our trust and faith in him. Let him do his job. the Lord. Amen. Someone else now. Who wants to testify? Okay. I told myself I was going to stay in my seat. But I also told the Lord many years ago I would never, ever fail 
to testify about what he's done for me. And uh, it was around 1990, and I started having problems. Uh, and they said, well, it's your kidneys, you know. Uh, it's just going to take time. You'll probably be an old woman before anything happens. Well, it was sooner than what I expected. But anyway, the Lord was with me the whole time. The, my church prayed for me. Um, and they kept praying for my healing, my healing, my healing. Well, he healed me. He sent me a donor. And my, my dear friend from, uh, from we were 12 years old called and said, I want to give you a kidney. And so we went through the whole process. It took us about a year. And uh, we met in uh, St. Louis, and it was just like a, a doctor's appointment, you know. They, her and her husband, me and my husband, we met, and the, the surgery was done. And it's, I just, we just celebrated our 20th anniversary in December. So I just thank the Lord for being through me with all this time. And, and as far as I know, everything is still good. And he's just been so good to me. And uh, from the, the loss of Jim on, I... I miss him so much, but I know where he's at, and I know I can go see him. And I just thank the Lord for all he's done for me, and I just just didn't want to fail to, to tell that. I used to have such a hard time standing up to testify for me. There would be testimony night. It was so hard for me. And then I realized that Jesus hung on a cross for me. How can I not stand up and tell everyone what he's done for me? But I have also learned that in order for me to get through this, I have to pray about it and write it down because the happy tears will fall and I will stumble all over myself. And so I'm very thankful you told us ahead of time this time, Pastor, so I could be ready. I... I, I'm so touched when Pastor Robert is moved by the knowledge that Jesus loves him. I share that, Pastor Robert. I share that. It's beyond me how God Almighty could care about a little girl in Arkansas. I mean, he's the God of the universe, the God of all glory, and yet he cares. And... Um, and I'm, I'm often moved by songs and music. And I heard a song by Matthew West called Me on Your Mind. And I immediately thought of Pastor Robert. But it stopped me in my tracks and captured my heart. And I just had the best praise time with the Lord listening to that song. And I'm just going to read just a few of the words. It says, who am I that the king of the world would give one single thought about my broken heart? Who am I that the God of all grace wipes the tears from my face and says, come as you are? You paid the price. You took the cross. You gave your life. You did it all with me on your mind, with you on his mind. He paid it all for us, and he didn't have to do that. While we were cooking tonight, we all get to talking about things we've just recently read in the Bible, and, and we share that while we're all cooking. And, and um, we were talking about the children of Israel and how every time God did a miracle for them, they just went right back out into the, into the world again, and they complained. He gives them manna, they want quail. You know, he covers them with a cloud, he shows them a pillar of fire by night, and they, they watch the sea open up, they build a golden calf. You know, and why in the world God didn't just wipe us off the face of the earth and start over again because he's God and because when he created man it was out of love and he's not ready to give up on any of us yet as far as sister Norma I share that I can't be still I can't and I pray that God gives me an opportunity every time I step out of the house or the phone rings, give me an opportunity to share the love of the Lord with somebody. He's always there, and he always will be. All we have to do is believe and reach out. And I am so thankful that he did that for me so many years ago. I could never go back to what I had before. I could never do it. 
Let's just hope the Lord comes soon, because I'm sure ready. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. I had asked those joining us online if they wanted to testify to send me a, a text of their testimony. And Sister Sandy Michaels sent this. She says, just want to say that I love God. Even when I'm going through hard times, I know he's always there for me. He always has been and he always will be. And God doesn't get angry at you when you're down. He simply lifts you up. And so we appreciate you, Sister Sandy. Thank you for sharing that. She's still rehabilitating from a broken leg and surgery on that. And uh, so we appreciate her tonight and remember her in your prayers. Who else wants to testify tonight? Somebody. Sister Sharon. Yes, come on. Hallelujah. just want to say I love the Lord and I know all of y'all have said the same thing he's been so good to me I was thinking as I'm sitting back there that May the 25th it will be a year since I had a heart attack um, God surely had his hand on me he's kept me for some reason and I'm so thankful um, I'd gone through several months of not feeling well and coughing and pneumonia and bronchitis and asthma, one thing after another, and I just couldn't seem to get well. I had several times, four times, in fact, where I walked up the stairs, and by the time I would get to the top step, I'd have to go lay down so I could catch my breath and, and get to breathing. Anyway... We went on vacation, and while we were there, that's when I had the heart attack. And um, while we were at the emergency room, the doctor did a test, and it didn't really show anything. And uh, I think it was three tests. Finally, he said, you're not going home. And I said, okay. And he, he said, we don't send people home that climb the stairs four times and can't breathe when they get to the top of the stairs. So anyway, they did surgery or not surgery. They call it a procedure. And I did have, um, they said I had a heart attack and a blockage. Of, they called it a widow maker, 99% uh, blockage of your main artery. So I had gone through a lot in the last few years since James had passed away. And this heart attack helped me to realize that I need to be careful about making plans. Uh, plans. You plan on this or you plan on that. And I bought me a new Easter dress and I didn't even get to come to church on Easter because of it. And so, but anyway, also this past week I found out that they did not raise my rent. And all this time, the Lord's working on that while I'm looking at figuring out where I'm going to move and, and uh, how much it's going to cost me. I never ever dreamed I was going to get to stay where I was. I just knew she was going to raise the rent, but she did not. So anyway, there's another thing. I don't need to be planning and making plans to do things that I don't concern the Lord with because uh, they don't usually pan out. But God is good to me, and I love him. I am like Sister Norma. I miss my husband so bad. Oh, there's sometimes I think, Lord, if he could just walk through that door one more time and hug me one more time. But I know that's not going to happen. But I thank God for my church family, and I thank God that I can go to him no matter what. I face in life. He's always there for me. A good thing for me is that I'm not afraid. I've never been afraid to stay by myself. I've never been afraid of, well, I'm not afraid of very much of anything, come to think of it, but, but, 
I mean, you know, a, an old ha a house where there's old or new, you hear these noises, and I just have to, something, something moved, I guess, I don't know, but I don't worry about that. But I know that God's with me every day. He keeps his hand upon me. I do need your prayers because uh, I find myself sometimes being a little lonely. I find myself sitting at home when I realize I need to get up and get out of that house and quit thinking about things that I can't change. So I'd appreciate your prayers, but I want you to know I love every one of you. You mean the world to me. My church family and my immediate family and my work family have been with me through all of this, and I just love you and appreciate you, and I I have a greater love for you now and for the ladies in the church and the, the others that have lost a loved one regarding the COVID or, uh, you know, cancer or other things. So there's a group of us ladies that lost our mate, and that's a hard thing, especially when you've lived with somebody for 49 or 48 years, almost 50. So the ladies in this church are brave women that love the Lord. And we pray for each other. We love each other. I, I don't think I've ever walked in this church that I didn't get a hug, you know, even if it was instigated by me. <laughs> the people that I worked with, the girls that I used to work with, if I go over to see them, they come running and give me a hug. And I'm always saying, you said you're not a hugger. Well, they're huggers now because... I guess I turned them into that, but anyway, I'm so thankful for my church family, and uh, James loved it here. <laughs> he loved pastor, and he loved sitting here and being under his ministry, and uh, he was comfortable and happy in his church, and Donnie, he he loved being here because you and Mary are here, and he, you know, ran around with y'all when he wasn't such a nice little boy, but you all made a full circle. None of us were nice little boys or little girls, were we? God saved us in any way. James enjoyed being here and being a part of this family. I know where he is. I miss him, and I'm like, Norma, I'm going to go see him someday. I do talk to him. So far, he has not talked back, but... <laughs> But, you know, anything's possible, isn't it? I love you guys. I got to say, if James were here, he would testify about Sharon. She, she gave her life to the Lord and served God for 25 years before James would ever uh, turn his life over to God. And she just lived a... Just lived it in front of him and loved him and, and uh, just let her life witness to him. And so I just praise God for that. You know, and to know that, uh, that James, though we miss him here, we know where he's at. And like she said, we'll see him again someday. Amen. We'll, we'll meet him in the air. Amen. One fine day. Praise the Lord. Appreciate it, Sister Sharon. Anyone else? Who wants to testify next? Okay. Well, I hadn't planned to testify, but I've been listening to all these testimonies, so I thought, you know, we've been talking about, been having intercessory prayer around here, so I thought, well, maybe this may help someone who is praying for someone. I'm here tonight because of intercessory prayer, and I don't doubt it for one minute. This happened in the late 80s. My mom and I had, we were in Aspen working, and anyway, we started back home. It was in wintertime, of course, there was snow. We left Aspen really early, and just right outside of Aspen, I was driving the van, and it hit black ice or snow. I don't remember what. But that started sliding. It went off the road backwards at a place called Shales Bluff. 
And eyewitnesses said that van rolled four times. My mom was injured pretty badly, but I was, you know, I, I knew everything was going on. But anyway, what I'm getting around to say is my sister lives in Hot Springs, Arkansas. She was there. She did not know we were going to be on the road the next morning. And so she didn't tell us this until after we finally got back to Arkansas. But she said the night before this wreck happened that she had this terrible feeling that came over her. She said it was the feeling of death. And she said she started praying. And she said she prayed until that feeling left. Like I said, she did not know we were going to be on the road the next morning. And so where we went off on that bluff, the paramedics, well, the mountain rescue team had to come down and get us out. We were down that mountain so far. And they told me at the, after we got to the emergency room that when the paramedics called in, they thought we were coming in DOA, dead on arrival, because they said people who go off at that place, eh, they came in DOA. And a year later, a policeman was killed in that very same place. So I'm telling this story just to say that you may not know what you're praying about or who you're praying for, but let me tell you, intercessory prayer works. I'm here tonight because of it, and I have no doubt in my mind. And I just love this church. I love the church family. It's just, it's a privilege. I think, you know, well, I get to go to church. I'm always looking forward to Sunday morning, Wednesday night. I don't have to go to church. I get to go to church, and I am so thankful to the Lord that he has provided and made provisions for me for all these years. I could never praise him enough. Praise the Lord. Amen. Powerful. Someone else. Oh, yes. And the 18 wheeler. That's right. That's right. Intercessory prayer. I'll tell you, it's powerful. It's God moving through our lives and through our prayers. Hallelujah. Sister Carolyn. It's good to be back in church again and with my family. Uh, it uh, has been a kind of a trying year, but things are getting better. I've met a lot of friends on the southern side of town, and uh, uh, I just thank God because he takes care of me every day, and my son, my family, and my sisters, and uh, I, uh, I'm just so blessed to be back in church. And I am very blessed by lots of people. Praise the Lord. Well, we're blessed to have you back, Sister Carolyn. Amen. Someone else. I've had this on my mind. I'm giving people a chance to think about it a little bit if you want to come up here or not. But she was, uh, Sister Patty, she was talking about the testimony I gave of being in the 18-wheeler in the middle of the night. It was 2, 3 o'clock in the morning on the Black Eyes and uh, came to a, it was just a right angle curve. It was a right hand turn with a little round spot in it. It's what it, what it amounted to. And I came into that too fast. I'd never been through there before. And I just couldn't slow the truck down quick enough. And so uh, I just turned the wheel enough what I thought would take it around the curve, knowing it wouldn't go. There was a uh, convenience store in front of me. And back then, that was, it's been a long time ago. It was, Back then, that was kind of new to me. You, you didn't see that much around here, not even any speedy marks or anything like that around here back then. But anyway, that's what I was seeing in front of me with the gas pumps out front. And the, the islands weren't lit up. They were closed. But I could see two men walking around inside there. And it looked like they were wearing white coveralls. That's what it looked like they had on. And one was his full plate glass window in the front. And I could see this one guy walking up the aisle there. And another one standing over there near the, near the counter. But anyway, uh, the guy that I was driving with, his name was Jerry Bowen, and he was in the bunk asleep. And when I came in this curve, like I said, I, I, I was reasonably certain I wasn't going to make it. Uh, to make things worse, we had a broken spring on the, the driver's side of the tractor. And every time I'd hit a bump, sparks would fly off of that. And so I was real on edge. 
uh, because of that anyway. One of, the, one of the roughest roads I've ever been on in my life. I thought that truck and that broken spring, uh, spring was going to beat me to death uh, before the ice killed me. <laughs> but anyway, um, I started into that curve, and the tractor swung around, and I could feel the trailer that I was pulling starting to push me. And uh, the tractor would weigh somewhere around 10 to 13,000 pounds. The entire truck maxed out about 73, 280 back then. That was the legal limit. And so there was probably about 60 to 63,000 pounds pushing me. And I, I still remember that incredible force, that weight. And as the tractor swung around, not trying to be sound dramatic or anything like that, but this, I, I'll never forget what I thought. I thought, oh my God, I've killed Jerry. Because the trailer would come in on the, the bunk first, you know, before I even ever hit the gas pumps or, or anything. And, and I, I testified about this not long ago, not to this length though. But I know that somebody was praying for me. Somebody was calling on the Lord for me in, in the middle of the night. It's one of those times, you know, you've probably, as a Christian, you've probably had times when you, you just wake up. You just feel the need to get up. You feel the need to pray. And so you do. Sometimes not knowing what you're praying about, praying in the spirit, not knowing even what you're saying. And so I know somebody was praying for me that night because when that thought went through my mind, I had to hold the steering wheel and I picked up my feet, you know, up, up off the floorboard. I was going to try to roll with a punch, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, it, it's like I just blinked out. And the next thing I knew, I was coasting down the street. Uh, and I looked in my mirror and I saw that convenience store behind me and I could hear uh, the truck was out of gear it was idling uh, just coasting down the street about 30 miles an hour and I could hear the the glove box rattle I looked around to see what is that I've never heard that before you know couldn't hear it because of the engine but the engine was just idling so uh, I didn't know what to think I was just dumbfounded so I just tacked the old truck up, tried to get it back in gear, braked them a few times, <laughs> finally found one to go in and went on, on, on down the road. And uh, I, I don't know, you know, it's just uh, it's one time that I absolutely know for certain, like Sister Betty said, I, I know that God saved my life that night. And so, you know, it, 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 intercessory prayer, I'm so glad that God's moving on us and moving through our church and we've got people getting involved in this. And uh, people are, that haven't experienced it before, they're beginning to learn and, and experience what intercessory prayer is. And it's a powerful thing. Amen. Get ready for a move of God. I'll tell you what, people keep doing this, and I guarantee you God is going to bust loose in this place. Amen. Somebody else want to testify tonight? All right, well. I want to talk for just a couple minutes about Hebrews chapter 12. I think it's about uh, verse 12 through verse 15. It talks about following peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And it goes on to say, looking diligently, lest any fail of the grace of God. And so I believe tonight God wants us to be diligent mean business amen put ourselves into it put our put our strength and, and uh, uh, seriousness into it and sincerely pursue after the Lord and after his holiness I, I believe uh, uh, God's moving on us to do this and so he has a purpose and a plan for it sure uh, it's, it's, nobody else wants to testify. We want to give you another top opportunity if you want to testify tonight. While they're thinking it over, you all want to come back to the platform for a minute. As the Lord leads, say a minute. Sometimes say that and wind up being an hour. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. God saved my soul because people kept praying for me. They wouldn't stop. They kept on calling on the Lord. I kept on being bullheaded and muleheaded and stubborn. And 
you know, I guess it's just Satan had a hold in me. But God broke through it one day, and he got my attention, and he saved my soul. I give him all the praise for that. Hallelujah. You got loved ones that are giving you a rough time, loved ones that are running from God, rejecting God, won't listen. Be encouraged. Be encouraged tonight, and don't stop praying for them. Amen. Because God will continue to pursue them. And I've seen people, you probably have too, that their prayers were answered after they went on to be with the Lord. But they would prayed those prayers and believed God. They didn't see it on this side. But we did after they left. Amen. So don't give up and don't be discouraged. God is hearing you when you pray. You are the love of my life. You are the hope that I cling to. Would you stand? These altars are open if you want to come and pray. If you need prayer, we'll pray for you. To me, I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, Lord, you are my everything. Yes, you are the love of my life. You are. The hope that I cling to, you mean more than this world to me. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, Lord, you are my everything. Yes, you are, Lord, you, you are, are my everything. Amen. I want to mention our food boxes will be given out two weeks from tonight on the 24th. So we just wanted to mention that. If you saw that on the screen, there it, it'll be the 24th and not tonight. So remember our service Sunday. Come and bring somebody with you. And know God will bless you. Yes, we need to pray for uh, Bruce Shaddix. Brother Bruce had a major stroke here several weeks ago, and he's still recovering. You know, he was uh, went to rehab, and he is improving, but he still needs our prayers. Could as we pray and and, and we dismiss in prayer, could we pray for Brother Bruce as well? Can we pray, Father? We thank you, Lord, for Brother Bruce. So oh God tonight and. That your hand is upon him, Lord God, you've been with him through the midst of all this. And we ask, Lord, that you would restore him, oh God, the ability to, to speak as he wants to, as he always did. Lord God, to get around, to move around, to use uh, his muscles, his body, his left side, to restore the use of it, oh God. And just help him, Master, touch him and Sister Letha both. God ministered their every need. And, we pray you keep your hand upon us. Bring us back to this house of worship at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. God bless.